Hey, what's up? Back to the dungeon. Uh, how the magic works. Arcane, divine, primordial, sonic, and infernal magic. We're just going to go over the arcane. A little bit of the divine. Um, first of all, magic is very connected to the attributes. Much of the power and ranges are connected to those attributes. Uh... You, we use a simplified d20 system to cast magic as well. Most casters will take their spell points, called mana by many, and spend them on the spells from this book or their mind. For most casters, the spell is locked in their mind until cast. For sorcerers, they spend points and cast freely from the limited ones in their mind. Spells cost their level in spell points to cast. Once expelled, they're gone for the day. Spell points, spell points return at the rate of one point plus your intelligence slash wisdom slash charisma bonus plus one half your level every two hours of sleep. Mana potions, you know, like in the video games, hey. Will instantly restore spell points. Also, armor and arcane casting. For every point of armor class, subtract your spell points. So you can cast spells in armor, but they armor takes away your spell points. For example, a fourth level wizard is eight spell points and a sixteen intellect, totaling of ten spell points. If you look at the chart, which will be shown shortly, he would recover one plus his intellect bonus of plus two plus two, which is half of the fourth level equaling five points every two hours simple enough spell attack difficulty roll or SADR most spells are connected to the attribute bonus plus the level of spell plus a 1d20 roll to hit a target by beating their armor class or take effect if the spell is an effect then the target of the spells must make a saving throw against the SADR of the spell to, for its take effect. On a natural 20, there's a maximum effect double or double damage. On a 5 or less, it fizzles and lost. Most casters won't notice, but it's embarrassing. On a roll of 1 or lower, the spell backfires. It hits the caster or one of the party members, and the spell points are used or lost for 1d6 days. A caster can play it safe and have a default 10 instead of rolling a d20. You can play it safe. Boring. Saving throws for monsters <coughs> without any attributes. They simply save at half their hit dice or level, if it's an NPC, uh, plus a d20 roll to resist a spell unless it's an attack that's then it's hitting armor class like any other attack. Characters and important NPCs on the other hand would save at half their level or hit dice plus any attribute that the game master thinks that would may apply to their spell effect. For example, if one is being targeted by a spell effect, one's body like an air blast, the spell would add their constitution or strength bonus to the roll. Contagion or polymorph would use one's constitution score to add to the roll, for example. However you run the game, make sure the magic goes fast. And if you think of a better way, make it up as long as it basically follows these rules. Example, for example, Frederico the Wizard with an intellect of 18, which is a plus 3, casts a second level bolt spell. Plus two at a filthy stinking orc and rolls an 18 for a total of 23, who is wearing chain and shield, AC 15, and has eight hit points. Since the SADR roll was greater than AC of 15, the orc is hit for seven damage plus three for the high intellect. We, when you're smarter, quicker, faster, you add that to the damage. Um, so, for a total of 10 damage, killing the baby stonk being orc. But suddenly, a small gang of three orcs show up with... Hit points 11, 6, and 10, and AC 15 as well, ready to slay poor Frederico. He sees them coming and decides to cast slumber. <laughs> oh, well, have a, a sneeze on recorded. Okay. The slumber spell. At the fell humanoid scum and rolls an 11 on the d20 plus 1 for the level of spell plus 3 for his high intellect score for a total DC of 15. He then rolls a 6 on the number of HD or hit dice put to sleep plus his intellect bonus of plus three for a total of nine hit dice worth of filthy creatures filthy orcs have a hit dice of two so that's plus one 
So the D20 save number spell, they each roll a 13, 5, and a 9, failing their saving throw against Slumber Spell, and fall asleep for 18 round, which is equal to Frederico's intellect score. Now, if it's a cleric, divine wrath. In the case of a cleric, a five or less on a d20 shows their god is disappointed with them. Usually with a minor sign or omen, while a one shows their god is angry with them. <laughs> Obviously a sign and gets a wrath point. After a cleric obtains a wrath point, a d6 is immediately rolled. If the roll is equal to or less than the current wrath, they must atone for 1d12 days to their god. Wrath points are also cumulative. The god's wrath goes to zero. Once a 20 is rolled or it goes down, one point every 1d6 days depending on how the cleric how much the cleric is varied from his face if the cleric gets six wrath point he automatically must atone for 1d20 days ranges most of the spells are intelligence wisdom charisma slash times 10 feet except for zero level spells which are intelligent wisdom charisma feet unless otherwise noted okay duration most spells last one round or intelligent wisdom charisma in rounds and if it has a set duration, uh, in rounds, if it has a set duration, spell points per day chart. Each caster gets these spell points per day as seen on the chart, plus their attribute bonus. That's why attributes are important. <laughs> Thus, a wizard with higher intellect will have more power than one with a lower score. You can have a wizard with minuses. Uh, you may not even get to cast spells at first level, you know, but you can still try. Uh, be an interesting story. Um, a full night's rest restores the ability to cast. It takes one minute per spell level to study and memorize a spell. You know, remember it's, you know, anyway. Uh, in some cases, a caster may be able to cast more spells due to his high ability score bonuses. This may be an issue of joy or jealousy. And oh yeah, wizards, egotistical bastards that they are. So the chart. Full caster level. This is the level of the caster. Spell points. This is the total amount of spell points you have. Each level plus your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma bonus. Or in this case, with a wizard, just be intelligence. Maximum spell level. That's the maximum level of spells one can cast until they get more powerful. Half caster levels. This is your level if you're a half caster. Which we have full casters and half casters. Which is like, for instance, rangers or... Uh, or people that are like mixed classes and such. They're half casters. Like, for instance, a spell blade. Uh, mana burn. Anyone can give up some or attribute points and give themselves bonuses on their spell roll as low as a 1 or to recharge mana. The caster can spend a full 20 points to gain a critical success, automatically succeeding. <laughs> These attribute points come back at 1 point a day. That's 1 point only. So, very risky. Caster begins to gain scars of the magic he casts and runes and symbols from their gods to show that they're sacrificed in faith. Regardless of how many points spent, a d20 is always rolled with a 1 resulting in a backfired failed spell and permanent loss of those attribute points as well. Hmm, better watch yourself. As well as any other sick and demented things the Game Master can come up with. Ha ha. So we look here, here's the full caster chart. And if you basically look, a full caster, uh, if he's 10th level, he gets 20 points. If he's 6th level, he gets 12 points. It's basically double the level. How many spell points you get, plus your attribute bonus. Isn't that neat? And then the max spell level is, uh, you know, every few levels you go up. Up to level 9, and then it maxes out there. The half caster, sorcerer spell zone. Basically, the sorcerers know as many spells as their level, plus their charisma bonus. But their maximum spell level is not as high. Oh, I mean, that's for a half-caster, not for a sorcerer. Then you have a quarter-caster. Uh, dabblers such as the ranger's ability to use primordial spells and the paladin's ability to use cleric spells. They don't start being able to cast until fourth level. So, just going over this stuff, I'm going to see how this works as a video. Thank you.